India reopened its doors to foreign tourists about two months ago. And now, Incredible India is ready with an aggressive social media promotional campaign to reach out to tourists and tourism trade alike. However, India will face several challenges in the months ahead to be able to compete with other destinations that are also eagerly scouting for tourists. In an interview with Media India Group, Tourism Secretary of India Arvind Singh outlines the steps taken by his ministry to revive inbound tourism. We hope that uh, you know the turmoil that we faced in the last two years settles down and we go back to our pre-COVID levels of tourism in 2022. And of course, uh, predominantly we see a major tourism happening in forms of groups and uh, the Indian diaspora because many of them have not been able to travel initially. So apart from them, of course, our traditional markets, which is countries in Europe, the US and the other advanced economies of the world and then the emerging uh, you know countries such as Japan or Korea where uh, from where we haven't seen much so I think that will be the pattern in 2022 we have just recently opened up for foreign tourists in the sense that charter flights have been allowed into India from the 15th of October and uh, tourist visas have been opened up on regular flights only from the 15th of November now, as it is the number of flights that are operating under the bubble agreement are limited compared to the number of flights that operated on a sector in the, say, the pre-COVID period. So naturally, the fares tend to be high because the number of flights are limited. The, we are working with the authorities to increase the number of flights. And as and when the number of flights goes up, the capacity on those sectors goes up, we expect the fares to go down. So I think from the calendar year, uh, 2022, from the month of January, we will expect uh, to see better flows of we are in talks. Uh, we, uh, number one, uh, the visas which are uh, you know being issued are only for a month. So we have requested uh, the visa issuing authorities that uh, it should be extended to uh, at least six months and multiple entries should be allowed because very often somebody who wants to come to India and goes to Nepal, you know, he gets uh, constrained. So these, uh, we should see these kind of relaxations happening in the future. The message that we'll um, carry is that A, we have a very successful vaccination program. You are aware of the numbers and the, the speed and the scale at which our vaccination program has uh, gone ahead. And also many states have prioritized, especially states that are dependent on tourism, have vaccinated the tourism stakeholders, all those who work at the hotels, the airports, in the uh, you know who are operating taxis or at other tourist related establishments they have been vaccinated on priority so i think the message that we will try to give is that we are safe it's a country where the disease is under control and you have very low risk of contacting the disease if you come to india and given the you know the successful vaccination program that we have run that will be one and then we will try to offer the you know experience of uh, say wellness tourism or uh, nature that uh, india has to offer so that a tourist in the post pandemic era can enjoy his stay in india i mean it is something that has worked for the domestic tourists so with this work from home we have seen that staycations as they call them uh, people going and working from a, a place outside the usual place of residence for two weeks three weeks or longer periods of time has happened and this is a reality that we have seen in the domestic tourists so i think uh, we will be able to adapt if there is a demand from international tourists also you know depending on the numbers that we can take but uh, this is something that we have experience in the domestic sector No, we'll, we'll start our digital and social media campaigns very soon and uh, we'll try to reach the audiences. Then, uh, you know, once, as I said, the situation normalizes in Europe and other parts of the world, we'll start physical campaigns also. And uh, then also we have roped in the embassies. Uh, recently, the Ministry of External Affairs has nominated 20 officers in 20 missions. So in collaboration we'll, with them, we'll work in key markets to work, uh, you know, to uh, overcome the competition and attract more and more people to India. No, 
no see we it is a part of a restructuring exercise we had a large number of officers so what it was felt that instead of you know spreading ourselves too thin it's better to concentrate on key markets so that's why we have reduced the number of officers to eight and there are eight officers we will strengthen these officers further in terms of manning with the required number of personnel and also take in the help of uh, the embassy officials and also there is a thought that uh, just like some advanced countries appoint marketing representatives in certain countries we could toy with that also in some economies and some markets segment what segment for instance uh, charter flights are coming in large numbers from europe to play destinations like goa and kerala and uh, and i don't see the numbers going down there so we will we'll work we definitely want to get more and more traffic so we will work with the uh, industry stakeholders and see what are the points where we can you know work to closer to reduce costs reduce uh, you know other you know processes where it can make it easier and we, we can get some tourists from other places I think that will be a major attraction, especially because, you know, there has been a lot of work that has also happened in upgrading the facilities, infrastructure facilities in the last few years at our spiritual destinations, be it uh, Varanasi, be it Somnath or be it in say, various other places, uh, at various Gurudwaras and other important places of religious worship. So I think that will be a very important segment and we are concentrating on that to get more and more. Uh, tourists to such places. The railways are running a host uh, series of trains. Recently, they ran a train on the Buddhist circuit. Then they ran a train on the Ramayana circuit. And they are planning to come out with uh, trains on the PPP mode, where private operators can operate trains on these kind of circuits. So I think uh, this is an area where we will work with other stakeholders, including the railways, to promote. You know, mice we definitely want to concentrate on because. Uh, uh, you know, we have a significantly small share of the global market. So we are working on strategies how to, you know, uh, allow strong destinations where mice can be held. Say places like Goa or Varanasi or Delhi where uh, these kind of capacities are there. And also new convention centers are now coming up. There are some very modern convention centers are coming up at Delhi. There's already, uh, you know, capacity like that at Goa. We have built a new convention center at Kajuraho. Varanasi, a very good convention center, has come up with Japanese assistance. So with this infrastructure coming in, we want to work closer with the local governments, with the state governments, to attract more mice activities to these countries. But definitely, it is an area of priority. Uh, you know, unfortunately, a large number of mice events of one job is to of course get some of them to india but also a lot of domestic mice events go abroad uh, so we, we would try to attract them and retain them in india in cruise uh, tourism is picking up if you see the numbers there has been growth in the last few years and a port like mumbai is emerging as a major hub for both international and domestic i recently uh, chaired a meeting where we are funding infrastructure. So, you know, we in the Ministry of Tourism have funded infrastructure for development of cruise terminals at Vishakapatnam, Cochin, Goa and Mumbai. And we are funding additional infrastructure at Mumbai. And uh, Mumbai is in the, you know, process of uh, starting an international cruise terminal where they'll, and they expect significant arrivals in the next few years. So, with our efforts and the efforts of the local ports, I think you'll see a fillip in uh, cruise terminals and cruise passenger traffic in the next few years. You know, there is a lot of uh, talk about uh, green tourism, about sustainable tourism, responsible tourism. We have signed an MOU on World Tourism Day this year with the United Nations Environment Programme and the Responsible Tourism Society of India. We have launched a Responsible Traveller campaign. There will be emphasis on uh, campaigns for sustainability, the, you know, assessing the carrying capacity of uh, destinations. And uh, the COVID uh, pandemic has taught us that. And in the process we saw, you know, once uh, the economy opened up and uh, travel started, we found that a large number of domestic tourists were going to particular spots and the local authorities had to place, place restrictions on the numbers that could come there on a weekend. So consciousness about uh, sustainability of tourism, about uh, you know the responsibility of tourists towards the local society, the local community is all growing. Uh, you know how to involve the local community more and more in these practices. So you will see more activity on that in the years, days to come definitely.
right now the challenge before us is to you know get uh, revive the sector we we are seeing uh, uh, we are seeing uh, you know the green shoots of recovery in the domestic sector we have recently opened up for international tourists hopefully that uh, once that it opens up and that experience will tell us you know what is the preferences of both the domestic and in the international tourists then we'll take steps in consultations with all uh, stakeholders about how do we widen the you know the the, the offering further Of course, uh, you know the the emphasis on the Buddhist circuit is an example. Where we, we, a lot of our neighbors, for you know, practice the Buddhist religion, and there has been a lot of infrastructure creation. Recently, an airport was inaugurated at Kushinagar, which is an international airport, which adds another airport, international airport, in the Buddhist circuit. Uh, Bodh Gaya, Varanasi and Kushinagar. So we expect all this addition of infrastructure to attract uh, more and more tourists, especially from our Buddhist neighbors and other countries in Southeast Asia.